were the 1970s reforms, Julian? There's many. Uh, one reform is that the party caucus, meaning the party, the, the body of Democrats and Republicans in the House and Senate, gain power to vote on whether someone should be a committee chair. It becomes a normal procedure. So every year they scrutinize who the chairman of the so committee they don't are. Like, if they don't like a Wilbur Mills or a Howard Smith, they vote them out. You got it. In 1974, they vote out Wilbur Mills. 1975, they vote out three of the most powerful chairmen. Uh, who were they? Uh, W.R. Pogue, Edward A. Bear, and Wright Patman, okay, uh, who are Wright forced Patman. to come before the Watergate babies in 75 and yeah. say, why should you be chair? And they vote him out. Oh, this was you described as an amazing thing to their older people, 70 new guys, and they're saying, they're we don't want you anymore. They are stunned, yeah. and, uh, and it was a big moment. Another reform is to open up the process. So committee hearings are open to the public and to reporters, probably more important. You mean the committee hearings weren't open before? No. Uh, most committee hearings were closed. Uh, openness increases dramatically in the 1970s. So the public doesn't know what you're doing. No, and, and re again, reporters, too, had much less access. They had to rely on uh, yeah. getting it from yeah. key staff. Yeah. Uh, you know, television is allowed into the chambers. Ethics rules are passed in 1977, which codify rules about a lot of things, which, again, before were allowed. How much income can you earn if you're a legislator by making speeches? And all of a sudden, in 1977... Now, what is the importance of that? Well, the, the idea was to clean up government. Uh, you wanted to limit the influences on legislators. So if they're going around speaking to interest groups, uh, making a lot of money, uh, that, that's not necessarily... You can't pay thing. somebody $50,000 to make a speech. You got it. And so, which is bribery, but please call it speechified. You got it. Yeah. And okay. legislators will get caught in that, like Jim yeah. Wright and Newt Gingrich yeah. will get caught in those rules. Yeah. Uh, so those are more of the, this, the number of senators uh, needed to end the filibuster is reduced in 1975. That's seen as a big change. That's to 60 from 66. You got it. You got it. And that's, it's a small number, but in that's Senate politics, deal. it's a lot. That's a big deal. And so there, those are just some of, of the reforms. The one man, one vote ruling in the 60s from the Supreme Court ends population inequality in districts, congressional districts. What does that mean? That rural districts don't have more power than urban districts after the 1960s, which had been a major source of power yeah. for these Southerners yeah. who, who had votes from depopulated areas. Yeah. And, they, and, and so th there's tons of reform. I mean, it's really, uh, that's one of the remarkable things is that reformers in that period don't look at one issue. Yeah. They're trying to change the way the whole thing works. Yeah. So today you have McCain-Feingold, uh, the campaign finance, focusing on one issue, soft money and campaign. Right? That's about the extent of reform in government. Yeah. This was a period when they were looking at the whole picture. And, and, a lot, and these are just some. The subcommittee Bill of Rights is another thing that passes, yeah. all within the spate of about seven, eight years. Yeah. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.